Hi, this is Jason Anderson with more Insights and Strategy, and I'm here with another installment of 6.5 on the Road at AWS reInvent 2025. Today, we're going to do a little bit of a different topic. Agents has been a hot topic, uh, but today we're going to talk with Stripe about agentic commerce, and I'm really excited to be here with Allison Ferris and Danny Smith, who are going to guide us through a little bit about this exciting new standard you put out uh, open source, as a matter of fact, right? So cool. Why don't you just both give us a little intro on yourselves before we dive in? Yeah. Allison, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. It's so great to, to be here today. So I'm Allison Ferris. I'm a Stripe developer advocate. So I work on really engaging the Stripe developer community and helping them really um, build on Stripe and learn about our products. Okay, great. Danny? No, yeah, Danny Smith. I'm a uh, global solution architect lead for agentic commerce at Stripe. So my job is to work with our customers and help bring these visions to life. Great. Perfect. So here at reInvent Topic, agents has been a huge topic, but um, I think you you folks are bringing something a little different to the table. So let's talk a little bit about agent, agentic commerce and why it matters now. Okay. Hmm. I'll start. Okay. Um, a little bit of a, an origin story. Um, we always love to talk about like where these things came from. So Stripe um, traditionally has worked with uh, a lot of the AI companies. We power the payments for uh, roughly 70 to 80% of the AI companies out there including companies like Perplexity and OpenAI. Okay. And Perplexity came to us actually late last year with this use case of people are using our chat surfaces to, to shop, uh, to actually get hyper-personalized recommendations. And we have no way to really make that like a curated experience. You know, right now it's, it's something that it's very, um, uh, you're getting different results each time. There's no way to complete the transaction. People are having to leave the chat surface in order to do that. So they came with us with a pretty complex use case of like, how can we facilitate this in-chat commerce experience and, and, and make it an experience that is safe, secure, um, and uh, you know, with, with, with built-in fraud prevention and things of that nature. So they turned to us, since they have worked with us to do their own payments, okay. saying like, hey, we're not an e-commerce company. Uh, you know, we're an AI company, and you know, we don't necessarily want to be an e-commerce okay. company. So we're going to turn to our experts and figure out like how can we you know, build this and make this something that's that's secure. Fast forward, we evolved. Same use case working with OpenAI came to us with the same problem set is hey people are using our agents to shop for things. Sure. So how can we make this a safe, fast, reliable experience? Um, and and so why it matters today, agentic commerce is basically it's 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 a very interesting use case of people are turning away from searching through product catalogs and like and 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 using like google searches and things of that nature and using these ai surfaces to find these recommendations and want to complete the purchase so it's just a natural evolution of where the market is going okay um great dad we yeah, love your perspective as well. Anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, when we think about the normal way to pay through an e-commerce website, now we're seeing a lot more trends through no longer searching for items, but prompting through um, AI agents for for finding kind of information. And then, um, as Dan mentioned, actually completing. How do we next take it to the next step of actually completing the actual um, payment successfully, safely, and securely? So, like so many things in the payments world from the past. Um, a standard is a great way to go, right? So um, I think that led you to develop the agentic commerce, you know, protocol, right? Um, and you open sourced it. So can you tell us a little about ACP, um, what it is, and, and you know, any background on it? Yeah. So the so ACP is stands for the agentic commerce protocol, and we're very excited about um, launching and co-developing this with OpenAI. Cool. And so essentially, what ACP is is an open standard that connects um, buyers through their AI. Uh, agents and sellers to seamlessly complete checkout uh, and payment transactions. And so this helps to standardize essentially how agents can communicate with sellers and their underlying payment service providers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's probably the most important thing, right? Safe and control. Right. Danny, um, have you been working with developers? How are they actually starting to use this in practice? I mean, you have a couple interesting case studies with these AI vendors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, developers at the end of the day, they're looking for composable building blocks to, to help like really tackle real world problems. And that's what ACP brings to the table. And a key part of ACP is something that we're calling the shared payment token. Okay. Um, and okay. so think of it as, um, I almost like to use the analogy of like a Russian doll. 
Okay. Of the, there's many layers built into uh, being able to facilitate e-commerce in general. Yeah. Uh, when you're just buying something on a website, you have to worry about things like PCI compliance. Yep. So you have to have vaulted uh, card credentials. We cannot forward people's personal credit card information over the internet. So we've always had to worry about, you know, making sure that that was a vaulted experience. In this new world of agentic commerce, there's a whole different challenge, right? Because you're basically shifting from using an AI agent to like discover things and the right content for you to actually being autonomously given a task. Okay. So I like to think of like agentic commerce, people think of agent as the root word. I like to say it's really agency, okay. which is giving someone autonomy to go perform an action on, on your behalf. So that's what's changing in the industry. But agents are very good at certain things and very bad at other things. Uh, when we first launched uh, last year, we were using more like browser automation, so basically giving a, a, a credit card, a, a virtual debit card, if you will, to an agent and basically having it go try to figure out a human readable checkout. Oh, okay. And, uh, and basically, you know, purchase the, the item that you're searching for in that manner. And what we found out is that agents are very probabilistic in nature, okay. the way they solve problems. And uh, we were seeing everything from like five seconds to sometimes 10 minutes to okay. have an agent figure out a human readable checkout. The protocol basically allows us to make this a more deterministic outcome yeah. yep. because agents are very good at hitting an API, making a direct call, and completing a task. So this is what developers like to hear. We live in a world of like APIs. We live in a world of webhooks, serverless architecture. So we're basically giving these agents the ability to act as a developer would in okay. making human-readable checkouts machine-readable. Okay. All right. And so that's what the protocol was designed um, to accomplish is let's not use browser automation and web scraping and let's, let's not give these agents tasks that they're not good at. Mm -hmm. Let's like refactor the experience to make sure that the agents are given tasks in a more deterministic fashion that they are good at. Yeah. So Danny, the shared payment token technology is really interesting. Can we double click on it a little bit? Like, for example, I'd like to know, does it work with multiple payment providers, isn't it, for instance? Yeah, that was a key part of what we wanted to to launch. We wanted to contribute to the overall problem, right? And so we wanted to make ACP in general an open protocol and shared payment tokens. While it is Stripe technology, it's open to be used by any third-party PSP. Okay. So we you know we do pass the fraud signals. Uh, we do pass everything I, I mentioned earlier, like the budgeted amount. So it is you know a, a lot of information encased inside the token. Okay. But it can be unwrapped as long as you have an, an ACP compliant endpoint. Okay. To basically uh, unwrap the token, it can be handed off to a third party uh, payment processor. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It's easier if, if you're using Stripe. It's basically like one line of code ish uh, oh, right. to make that right. uh, transition. But we're definitely open to um, working with uh, third party PSPs. We want to make this an open uh, experience where we're contributing overall. That's great. I think, you know, it's just such an excellent point um, around agents in general. You know, I've been researching it now for a year and a half plus, and what we're finding is that, um, to your point about determinism, it's agents are so good at non-deterministic, but they tend to, you know, have trouble with deterministic. So we are definitely seeing a marketplace where people are starting to uh, connect that bridge, right? Find ways to connect that bridge through tools or through <laughs> APIs, because uh, otherwise it just it doesn't go as well as intended. It really is the combination of the two to make it work, right? And so to kind of complete that thought on the shared payment token, this is this is the tool that we've given developers. Yeah. The, the fact that you can now create this token that has built in uh, what we call guardrails. So to give an agent full autonomy, you're basically saying, here's this credit card, go shop for whatever it is. I'm, if I'm shopping for a model airplane, you want to make sure it doesn't hallucinate and try and buy a real airplane and Right. drain your bank account. And so you have to have built in uh, guardrails inside of this shared payment token. Okay. Things like budgeted amount. Uh, we also send fraud signals uh, using Stripe radar, uh, expiry, there's built in expiry. Mm -hmm. So developers love having tools like this that, that solve problems that they can use in a very composable fashion. Yeah. And that solves the issue of an agent possibly hallucinating or doing something unpredictable. And when it comes to payments, you want everything to be very, very predictable, very safe, secure, and, and compliant. So 
Why don't we just shift gears for half a second? Because you're onto this idea where you're talking about in terms of the developer experience. If we kind of zoom out from that a little and talk about the community overall, Danny, right? By open sourcing this and kind of giving this out, like what what's the intention on the community level, right? Like what, what do you think they're going to get for in this in this uh, kind of exchange? Yeah, absolutely. I think as Dan, Danny mentioned, we're starting to see a lot of, uh, I think with the launch of the Agentic Commerce Protocol, we're now allowing developers to be able to really drive AI native commerce flows and build innovation across the multiple, multiple types of business models. Um, today, kind of the V0 version of ACP really supports foundationally an e-commerce flow, a one-time payment okay. and purchasing one item, but with the ACP and really the drive for open source and really building off of the community element aspect is allowing developers to have the standards to be able to innovate and build to really solve for the business cases that they're looking at. You know, we're starting to see a lot of uh, developers experimenting with things like autonomous marketplaces, AI-driven storefronts, and so allowing them to be able to um, build on top of the ACP compatible endpoints will help them really feature-proof their integrations to enable um, simple kind of innov innovative uh, payment flows today through Agentic Commerce and then allowing them to really grow and adapt when it comes to um, the changing AI landscape. You, you could also see some real openings in kind of more of uh, business to business payments or buying commodities exactly. in bulk, yeah, right? right? Where mm -hmm. that could speed things up or even really change how procurement departments work in companies today, right? Absolutely, yes. Because right, right now today, what we're doing with the shared payment token is allowing really secure basic um, capabilities for allowing an agent to make a transaction on behalf of a seller and a buyer very seamlessly. And so really allowing the open source community to really um, shape the, the future of the protocol in the way that they see kind of the demand in their customer uh, requirements and needs. That's great. So last question um, in terms of, uh, both of you can take a stab at it, in terms of how do you see this playing out? Like what's the future of ACP? Um, and also how can people get started now, right? So mm -hmm. Two part question for you. Okay. Yeah, so um, as Allison mentioned, like we're, we're evolving. So like ACP, it was an initial launch. We launched initially with Etsy. We have some other major merchants that are, that are onboarding very soon. Uh, it began as like a six month journey of building this um, basically as uh, a bespoke integration that we decided, hey, we can help, you know, contribute to the overall community and make, let's make this a protocol. Let's like, let's save everyone else the six month journey of uh, building all these different uh, services that, I, the, that are involved in hosting ACP endpoints to listen for these shared payment tokens uh, that we're talking about. Uh, so let's publish it as a protocol. Let's put it out there. It's co-authored with us in OpenAI, but we're very much understanding that it's an evolving spectrum. Okay. So we want developers, but there's a GitHub repo. You can go to agenticcommerce.dev. Oh, okay. uh, you can see like all the specs. So there's a product feed spec, as you can imagine. Um, the, the very interesting thing about the protocol is that it is open. And so it's open to you know anyone as a merchant to participate, but anyone as an AI agent also to participate. Okay. So we see this emerging ecosystem of AI agents, and we've mentioned OpenAI and Perplexity already, but we've got things like Microsoft Copilot, oh, uh, Google right. Gemini, you know X. So like there's there's this huge landscape of AI agents, these chat services that people are going to be using to to shop for different yeah. you know you know items. So we want to make this an open protocol that anyone can use as an AI agent. And then any, anyone can use as a backend merchant. And, uh, you know, Stripe, again, we'll work with you as far as like, you know, that journey. But we're looking to the overall developer community to really help us evolve this, you know, go, go into the GitHub repo. Uh, we've got uh, demos. We've got uh, developer community YouTube uh, videos that we've released recently that really do a deep dive into the protocol and how to build things on it. So we definitely want that overall adoption and participation from the community. We're very open to that. And you license it as Apache 2.0, which is a very permissive developer-friendly license, which will definitely help accelerate that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and, yeah, and I think another angle of really having an open standard is the interoperability that is really essential when interacting across agents, multiple different types of PSPs, payment service providers, and sellers, right? And so kind of the next iteration of ACP is really to help enable and, and just drive broader adoption so that we have this open standard so that as we're starting to innovate, 
Um, we're not slowing down innovation. We're able to really drive kind of the network effect of adoption through both AI platforms who are ACP endpoint compatible, as well as developers getting their seller workshops and, and storefronts ACP um, uh, com uh, and, compatible. And, yeah, exactly. And in, in full transparency, there are many use cases we have not solved for yet. Sure. So we and Stripe would always say we, we haven't won yet. Like, you know, we're we're constantly, you know, working on innovation. There's things um you can go out and experiment with this today. You can go on instant checkout with ChatGPT and buy things on uh on Etsy. But there you'll notice that it's like single item checkout. Um there's there's many use cases, there's loyalty programs, there's all kinds of use cases that we really want to turn to the developer community to help us solve. Okay, uh, and that's both like partners that are out there in the ecosystem, but any any developer who wants to, to jump in and help us solve for these evolving use cases, because there's so many use cases that right. we need to tackle in the future. Yeah. That sounds great. So, um, Allison, Danny, thank you for your time. Really appreciate hearing about the health. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. And for all of you, thanks for joining us. And uh, just to wrap up, it's six five on the road, and we were here with Stripe. Have a good one.